والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم Islam is keeping up the pace Islam is for every race Bismillah alhamdulillah and welcome to this episode of the beauties of Islam I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about one of the most beautiful things that I found in Islam. It's the answer to one of the biggest questions that people are always asking about. Have you ever heard about something called kismet? Uh, no. Maybe you heard about something called predestiny, or predestination, or fate. Have you heard about that? Well, there's a word in Arabic. It's called qadr. Qadr. Have you heard of that? In Arabic, we have something that we understand as qada and qadr. And what is qada and qadr? It means that everything is already written that's going to happen. Everything that's going to take place is already in motion. And it's a done deal. It was known to Allah before He ever created exactly what He would create and what it would do. Now, all of this is dealing with a part of our program and the beauties of Islam, dealing with rationale, the rational thought of the human, the common sense that we have, and then something that's much bigger, which is the knowledge of Almighty God. What is it that God knows that we don't? Well, I will tell you that He knows everything, and we know nothing, illa bimasha, except what He gives us to know. But what about this idea of qadr? What about this predestination thing? Even some Muslims, when they're trying to present it, get tangled up in it. But did you know it's actually one of the articles of faith of a Muslim? Once when the angel Gabriel came to Muhammad, peace be upon him, he asked the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that the people would hear the answer, what are the beliefs in Islam? And prophet Muhammad said that the beliefs in Islam are to believe in Allah to believe in his angels, to believe in his books, and to believe in his prophets, and to believe in the resurrection when people are resurrected and brought back to life again. And finally, the sixth point is to believe in the qadr, the predestination, this kismet that I was talking about when we opened the program. So that is a principle. That is one of the things Muslims must believe to even be a Muslim. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also said that eventually it would be a time when Muslims would be arguing about this point. And today, guess what? <laughs> they are. They're arguing about this very point. And that means what? That they're proving his prophecy that it would happen. But even so, let us discuss what is predestination. How does that really work? And why should we believe it? Well, if you really believe there's God and you believe that he's perfect, and he doesn't make any mistakes, then what is wrong with the idea that he made something that could never go wrong? He created something, designed something, and put it into motion, knowing from the beginning exactly how it would come out. After all, he's God, and he's far beyond anything we can imagine. Yeah? All right. If he said, well, yeah, but I got a problem with that. Well, I already know your problem, but go ahead and tell me anyway. Because I've heard this argument many times. They say, well, if this is true, if God already knows how everything is going to come out, and if God has the power behind that, then how would it be fair that somebody would be rewarded for any good that they did, or somebody else would be punished for any bad that they did? Because in effect... It would have really been because God made them do it anyway. So how would it be fair? How would there be any justice or fairness if it's already a done deal? It's already going to happen. So why should I even bother? I'm going to die on a certain day. I'm going to eat certain food on this day. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do this and that. And uh, it's already written. It's already, you know, so how is that fair? And why would I bother? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, heard somebody asking about this. He told him, even though you have to work and do your good deeds as much as you can, 
because you don't know the outcome, do you? Simply put, I want to give you the simple answer on this one because often we get going on these, we come to the break, and I'm afraid I'm going to lose somebody on that. So I want to tell you right now the answer to this part of it. How do I answer somebody who asks me about what is Qadr and Qadr? What is that? What is this predestination of Allah? It's simple. Simply put, it means Allah knows, but you don't. Listen again. Allah knows, but you don't. Because Allah knows, He's caused everything to happen the way it's going to happen. But because you don't know, it's still fair. Because you're going to have what's called the niya or the intention. In Islam, everything is based on your intention, your niya. Because without that, what do you really have? You would only have what Allah has already willed to happen. But what do you want to happen? Because you don't know the outcome, you don't have even a clue of what's really going to happen tomorrow. Could be anything. Because everything's always changing, changing, changing. But Allah knows. And He's going to make it happen in accordance with what He wants in the grand design of things to come. And the person who intended to do good, whether it ever happens or not, they already have their reward with Allah. That's the teaching in Islam. The reward they have is with their Lord because they had the intention for it. And the person who wanted to do bad and they did bad, then this is what they have the reward of because that's what they really wanted. But there's something real big that goes along with this. And guess what? We're at the break, so I'm going to let you think about that till we come back and give you the answer on the beauties of Islam. Beauties of Islam. Be right back. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your evil. Hi, welcome. من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Including the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life We we'll listen to the participants and the guests We'll take your phone calls We're going to recite life We'll listen to your recitation and will correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true. Will come true. <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, we're back. You're watching the beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes. We've been talking about something called Qadar wa Qadar, the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what we've been talking about is this predestination or the concept that Allah already knows everything that's going to come out, the way it's going to happen. And in fact, it's He who is behind all of this. He's the one having the power behind it, the one making it happen. And the question that people say, well, wait a minute. If that's so, then why would I be punished for something Allah made me do anyway. Or why would I be rewarded for something that I couldn't have avoided, I was going to do it anyway. And in fact, we said the answer is because Allah knows and you don't. And what you're really being rewarded for is your heart, your intention, your feeling that I want to do good. I wish I could do good. The more you desire to do good, the more good is recorded for you. Very often we see that we're able to accomplish the things that we desire. But it's not because of any willpower that we have. Rather it's because Allah is allowing us to see the fruition of our deeds. He's allowing us to see this blossoming and the, even the result of our efforts to the extent that we can say, MashaAllah, I was able to do this, I was able to do that. But the reality is you were only able to do it because this was the Qadr of Allah. Often we hear Muslims say that expression. They say, MashaAllah, Qadr Allah. Usually we use the expression, MashaAllah, which means because 
uh, Allah willed. Qadr Allah, the will of Allah. We usually say that when something bad happened or something we didn't like and things didn't work out the way we wanted them, you know? For instance, you know, I'll go to my car and I'm at the parking lot. I'm in a hurry. i got to get home. I forgot to do this and that. And suddenly I get to the car and I realize, my keys. Where are my keys? Do you have my keys? Where's the keys? Who's got the keys? Huh? You Look in the basket. Look in your purse. Look in your pocket. Where's the, Who's got the... No, I don't... Oh, no. Look inside the car. <laughs> the keys are in the ignition. Oh! Now what? Why are the keys in the ignition? It's your fault. You should have seen those before we got out of the car. Why didn't you take them out? Why didn't you take them out? Well, you were looking at them, and I had to roll the window down, and then I put it up. All of this is what? This is blaming each other for something that we could not have avoided. This was going to happen. This is called Qadr. It is what happened. Allah wanted it to happen. That's why Muslims say, Qadr Allah. MashaAllah. It's from Allah. It's what Allah willed. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. But it works both ways. If you see something that's amazing, something really good, something that you appreciate, somebody, let's say for instance, gives you a lovely gift and you open the gift and you say, oh, it's what I wanted. MashaAllah. Because Allah willed. Not because this person went down and bought it and wrapped it and gave it to you. Although we'll say thank you for that. But it happened because of the cutter of Allah. So we say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Somebody has a little baby born. Oh my gosh, you got a, a, a new baby girl. And they're going to say, Qadr Allah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Like this. Because we always acknowledge that everything comes from Allah. Everything returns back to Allah. There's something that Muslims say too when they get the news of somebody who died. Everything comes from Allah. Everything goes back to Allah. Now, in some traditions, you hear people say something about everything came out of the earth and everything goes back to the earth. But really, for the Muslim, we don't think our soul came out of the earth. Our body did. And when they say ashes to ashes, dirt to dirt, dust to dust, but it's bigger when you stop and think of the rest of it. It's because of the will of Allah. And that's why we say, in the lillahi wa in the alayhi rajiyun. From Allah we came. And to Allah is the return. And all of this in between was His will. This was all something that He wanted to happen to us. And then what? And what was the reason behind it? This is where people get confused and they start saying, well, what is the purpose? Why did God create me? Why did he put me in this condition? Why, why, why? And even in the Quran, we found this beautiful teaching in the Quran. And it says, well, He's telling you right there the purpose. The purpose of your life and my life. And Allah says, the only reason I created you guys is to worship me according to my will. Make your niya, your intention for Allah, and then you'll be successful. MashaAllah. Until next time, remember the beauties of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam is peace, Islam.